objective. This video is designed to teach you about scale rulers that measure length in feet and inches. It is worth noting that there are a variety of scale rulers. For example, there are metric, engineer, and architectural scale rulers with different scales marked. These skills are necessary in order to read and draw blueprints and scale drawings. In part one of this video, you will learn how to read a scale ruler. Part two will focus on learning how to measure scaled lengths, which builds up to part three of drawing scaled lines. Materials. For this video, all you will need is a customary architecture scale ruler, triangle, and a drafting pencil or micron pen. I want to start this tutorial by first explaining why scale rulers are important. In order to accurately represent large areas or items onto a piece of paper, we need a fixed ratio of length or different scales. Scale drawings will then list the scale used in order to read it. Part 1. Before we can use this tool, we first have to be able to read a scale ruler. This ruler uses 11 different scales. Notice that most sides have two scales, one on the left and one on the right. This orientation is crucial because it will determine the direction you read feet versus inches. Feet are measured using the markings found towards the middle of the ruler, whereas the smaller markings closest to the edges of the ruler measure inches. For scales on the left side of the ruler, such as 3 32nd, feet are on the right side of the zero, closer towards the middle, and inches are on the left side of the zero, closer towards the edge. But for scales on the right side of the ruler, such as 3 16 feet are on the left side of the zero, closer to the middle, and inches are on the right side of the zero, closer to the edge. For additional practice of determining which part measures feet versus inches, let's look at some other scales. In this case, feet are on the right of the zero, inches are on the left, whereas on this side, feet are on the left and inches are on the right. And again, feet are to the right with inches on the left versus feet on the left and inches on the right. The two scales on each side are related. The smaller scale is half of the larger scale, or another way of thinking about it is that the larger scale is double the smaller scale. The smaller scale marks feet on the top row of numbers using a smaller size label. For the smaller scale only, each line after the zero will represent one foot. For example, in the one half inch scale, meaning every one half inch drawn is one foot in real life, we can see the top row shows one foot. Notice two feet is already labeled, three feet, four feet, and so on. The larger scale marks feet on the bottom row of numbers using a larger size label. For example, in the one inch scale, meaning every one inch drawn on the page is one foot in real life, you have one foot, two feet, three feet, four feet, and so on. Please note that not all large scales have every whole unit labeled, which means you may have to determine where one foot is. For example, in the 3 16 inch scale, it only has even numbers labeled. Two feet, four feet, six feet. So one foot would be midway or halfway between zero and two feet. In this case, one foot is every two lines. So one foot, notice two feet is already labeled, three feet, and so on. Next to each zero, notice the smaller ruler. This is the portion that is used to measure inches. Because of this, it will always add up to 12 since there are 12 inches in a foot. Reading this portion of the scale ruler requires the most thought, so we will look at several examples. For example, in the 3 16 inch scale, there are 12 spaces between the lines, so each line represents 1 inch. Here is 1 inch, 2 inch, 3 inch, and so on. In the 1 8 inch scale, there are less than 12 spaces. This means each line represents more than one inch. Instead, it has six spaces, so each line will represent two inches because six times two is 12. Here's two inches, four inches, six inches, and so on. In the 3 fourths inch scale, it has more than 12 spaces. 
This means each line represents less than one inch. There are 24 spaces between the lines, so each line represents half an inch because 24 times half equals 12. Here is half an inch, one inch, one and one half inch, two inches, and so on. In the final example, looking at the three inch scale, it has the most spaces. In this case, each long line represents one inch. Here's one inch, two inch, three inch, and so on. The space between each inch is further subdivided into eight parts. So each small line represents one eighth inch. So this is one eighth inch, one fourth inch, three eighths inch, and half an inch, and so on. Part two. Now that you can read a scale ruler, we are going to start using it to find the measured lengths of lines. We will start measuring these two lines using the 1 fourth inch scale on your ruler. Notice the scale is on the right side of your ruler, so feet are measured on the left side of the zero, closer towards the middle, and inches on the right side of the zero, closer towards the edge. Also, notice that the zero is on the bottom row using larger labels. Because two feet is the first label, we need to determine where the midpoint or halfway point is to find one foot. In this case, every two lines represents one foot. Here's one foot, two feet, three feet, four feet, and so on. Line up the ruler so that an end point on the line starts at zero. This first line drawn is one foot, two feet, three feet long. Measuring the second line will require more work. After lining up the beginning of the line with zero, we can count how many feet this line represents. It is one foot, two feet, three feet, four feet, but is shorter than five feet. This means the measurement will be four feet and some inches. So, Line up the end of the line with the whole number it measured to be, which in this case was four. If you accidentally line it up with five instead, you will notice your line doesn't reach zero, cluing you into the fact that you haven't lined it up correctly. To figure out the inches, we need to first figure out what each line represents. In this example, there are 12 spaces, which means each line represents one inch. Our example is one, two, three, four inches, which means the second line represents a total of four feet and four inches. In order to get used to different scales, we will practice measuring these same two lines using the one eighth inch scale. Notice the scale is on the left side of your ruler, which means feet are measured to the right of the zero, closer towards the middle, and inches to the left of the zero, closer towards the edge. Also notice that the zero is on the top row using a small label indicating that each line to the right of the zero will represent one foot. Here's one foot, two feet, three feet, four feet, and so on. Measuring the first line, line up the ruler so that the end point on the line starts at zero. This first line represents one foot, two feet, three feet, four feet, five feet, six feet. Keep in mind that the length of the line on the page has not changed from when we measured it the first time. The scale is what changed. Because we are using a smaller scale, one that is half the size of the first scale, the measurement has doubled. Moving on to measuring the second line using the 1 8 inch scale, remember to start by lining up the beginning of the line with zero. Then count how many feet this line represents. It is 1, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight feet, but is shorter than nine feet. This means the measurement will be in feet and inches. Line up the end of the line with the whole number it measured to be, which in this case was eight. To figure out the inches, we need to first figure out what each smaller line represents. In this example, there are six spaces, which means each line represents more than one inch in order to get to our total of 12. Each line will represent two inches because six times two is 12. Our example is two, four, six, eight inches, which means the second line represents a total of eight feet and eight inches. Part three, the final skill associated with using a scale ruler is to draw measured lines. We are going to draw two different lines using two different scales. 
For the first line, we are going to use the three inch scale. We will draw a line that represents one foot, two inches. Keep in mind that the three inch scale is using the bottom row of numbers. Start by finding and marking where one foot would be and mark it. For the inches, remember that this adds up to 12. Notice that in this scale, every third inch is already labeled. We first need to determine where one inch would be. If you aren't sure, you should be able to continue the spacing in order to get to the next labeled number. And then, mark above two inches to finish the point. Because some scaled rulers have notches in them, I would recommend drawing your straight line with a different tool, such as a T-square or a triangle. Because I'm not sure if my marks are parallel to the top of the page, I'm going to use a triangle to connect my dots. This line represents one foot, two inches, using a three inch scale. For the second line, we are going to use the one and one half inch scale. We will draw a line that represents one foot and six and a half inches. Keep in mind that the one and half inch scale are using the top row of numbers. Start by finding and marking where one foot would be. Notice the first label in the top row represents two feet. So our one foot mark needs to be the midpoint or halfway point. Because it's smaller than the two scales on this edge of the ruler, you might have remembered that each line after zero represents one foot. For the inches, remember that this adds up to 12. Notice that in this scale, every third inch is labeled. We first need to find where six inches would be. In this case, it's labeled. To find six, one half, figure out where seven inches is. It is here. If you aren't sure, you should be able to continue this spacing in order to get to the next labeled number. Seven, eight, nine inches. Now that we've found seven inches, we would mark the midpoint or halfway point between six and seven. Then, use a triangle to finish drawing the line. This line represents one foot and six one-half inches using the one and one-half inch scale. Summary. You have reached the end of this tutorial, which means you should be able to apply the following skills. Read a scale ruler, use a scale ruler to measure a line, and draw your own scaled lines. I'd encourage you to go back and pause to practice any parts that you are not yet comfortable with. With these skills, you can now read and draw blueprints and scale drawings.